this but in case we have others to come in late or may not be able to make it today so we can um, have this as a reference huh? the recording is done eh? um, first of all I would like to thank uh, Dr Faiza from uh, UMCIC I would like to express our sincere appreciation for UMCIC to have this session with us today a little bit of introduction we have one hour we have one hour to to uh, go through the IP and um, some some tips from UMCIC um, but I would like to introduce Dr Faiza Dr Faiza Nazri uh, Abdul Rahman is the uh, current deputy director and head of legal University of Malaya Center of Innovation and Commercialization UMCIC she hold the post since March 2020 and Dr Faiza is a lecturer at the Faculty of Law Dr Faiza so um Without further ado, um, we have a little bit of um, background just now before we formally started. So um, I will pass the screen to Dr. Faiza. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Thank you, Dr. Noraza, for that kind of introduction. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon to uh, everyone here. Um, thank you for, um, firstly, of course, to ADAC for organizing this uh, little um, webinar on uh, copyright and for kindly inviting us from UMCIC uh, to share um, our, our experiences uh, with you. And hopefully it will uh, assist uh, all of you in some little way to uh, understand more about copyright and how it can help you with your work. So uh, with me, actually, I have uh, my um, staff, my uh, officer who is in charge of uh, copyright. She's actually the star of the show here, and uh, she will share with you the, the, uh, what are the requirements and the steps that you need to take in order to, um, to um, get your, your um, publications and whatever you know inventions that that qualify the copyright to be copyrighted um, and uh, to get the notification that it needs so um, before we go into copyright um, sorry um, can Puan Rahayu, Puan Siti Rahayu, she's my uh, officer can you would you like to share the screen for the um, slides. Okay. So what we're going to do basically is to just have a um, general introduction to um, IP or intellectual property. Um, not going, you know, so much into detail, just a general introduction. And then we'll go straight into copyright because that, that is the focus of the webinar today. Are you? Um, uh, for me, belum lah. Belum nampak lagi. So sorry, yeah, for the <laughs> technical difficulties we're facing at the moment. 
okay Dr. Faiza. Um, in the meantime, sementara Ayu is trying to share, maybe I can <coughs> request the participants, the audience, if you have any um, questions or uh, remarks or comments that you would um, put, you would like to put on the chat section even now, you can, sementara so that uh, pihak UMCIC will be able to um, review and somehow prepare or just 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 have some um, gauge of the kind of um, questions or the kind of um, query that you have. Okay, dah nampak dah. So feel free to just type in um, any of your concern or question and we will find time to address it more specifically when when the time comes okay so okay saya selah semula kepada Dr Faiza silakan okay uh, i think we can see the slides uh, are up now can yes. all, can all of you see it too yes cuma belum tu as slide show uh, slide show uh. dekat bawah tu are you bottom uh -huh. right ada slide show Kiri lagi. Yeah. Yang sebelah komen tu. Mana tu? Oh bukan, kanan skip. Sebelah tanda negatif. Sebelah tanda, tanda minus oh, tu. Yeah. Ah tu. Selalu guna uh, mid tu. <laughs> okay sikit. <laughs> Ni guna teams tak biasa. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so everyone can see the slide now, yeah? Yes. Yes, we can. Um, Okay, so let's just go straight to the next slide on this. Uh, are you? Okay. So uh, this is just uh, firstly looking at the a general introduction to intellectual property. So the term intellectual property or IP, as we normally hear it, um, is ordinarily understood by the layperson, meaning you know um, most people who 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 not who are not um, um, who are not trained in the law. Yeah, uh, so it's ordinarily understood by us to mean products of the human mind, right? Whatever that we produce with our with our mind, with our, with our thinking, with our brain. So new ideas generated by mankind uh, as a result of human creativity. So the ideas that we have, um, the thoughts that we have, or even revelations that we might have, which, you know, sometimes come at the, the most inconvenient of times, like for us especially, as you know, as lecturers, we, we never stop thinking about our work, right? But we don't have a um, like um, a cut off period from the time when we start our work in the morning at say eight o'clock or nine o'clock and we stop working at five. So especially now when we're doing work from home, we're working all the time. But even when we were working at the office, you, you, we, th we seem to think about our work all the time, right? Even when we're cooking or we're gardening or we're shopping, we're doing anything, something else, not doing work, but our mind is always thinking about, um, you know, our academic and research work. So it's something that is difficult to switch off, isn't it? So this is something that we, we think is what is meant by intellectual property, something that comes from our intellect. And it's true that this IP is all around us. It's manifested in all the things that we we, we use and... Uh, um, and um, you know, that we, we live with, ordinary goods and services uh, that we use, for example, the mobile phones, cars, the car parts, computer hardware and software, um, the books that we read, the books that we, you know, try to write, uh, music, films, photographs, um, the architecture of a building, um, logos, technical and business know-how, pharmaceuticals, works of art, yeah, all of this and more, um, everything that is a product of our human mind are all IPs. Yeah, um, however, 
the legal meaning of IP for those, um, uh, you know, thinking about the legal aspect of IP is actually referring to, to not the, um, the ideas themselves, but actually the rights which are given by the law to these products of the mind. Yeah, so when the law affords rights to them, that's when you have um, the actual um, IP that can be, uh, you know, that can be enforced. Um, but the thing with the law is we, we might or we hope to think that the law would cover, would govern everything. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, you might think, yeah, uh, you might say it, it doesn't actually for any law, not just intellectual property law. Uh, not everything under the sun is covered. So in order for there to be a right, it has to be firstly recognized. So likewise for IP, not all products of the mind are protected by the law um, as much as we would like it to be. But it has, you know, th there are reasons why we don't do that because uh, when you have the legal protection, it comes with certain consequences, sometimes good, sometimes bad. So, for example, an idea that has been disclosed to the public without any restriction on the use yeah, of um, this disclosure and does not fall within any of the recognized uh, branches of IP in this country. Yeah, and the thing with laws, of course, it differs from country to country, so it depends where you are. Uh, and where, of course, the other criteria for IP is where the, the, the um, the idea is being generated and expressed. So to be protected, um, it must fall within one of the recognized legal regimes of IP law in this country for it to be protected here. So the law protects uh, owners of IP by doing two main things. Um, it prevents others from doing certain activities in relation to the intellectual creation um, and at the same time, it tries to give exclusive. Uh, it tries to give exclusive rights to the owners of the IP to commercially exploit the intellectual creation. Um, so the same thing that you're trying to do with the IP. For example, you're trying to uh, make uh, copies of it, or you're trying to license it. Um, this is something that's exclusively uh, given to the owners and other people are not allowed to do, to do that unless they have the permission of the owner of the IP. So this right um, is something that, um, although it is um, conferred to the uh, IP owner, it does have limitations. For example, it has a limited duration. It's not forever. Yeah, the law tries to give this uh, protection and the exclusive rights, but you, it does have a limited period of time. Um, so these exclusive rights, uh, for example, include, uh, as I mentioned earlier, licensing. It can also include um, assigning, um, you know, the the rights. It could be selling uh, the work to a third party. So um, the reason why the rights are not perpetual, um, I will explain a, li a little bit more later, but um, it can have a damaging effect if it is a, a, you know, an eternal uh, monopoly because the reason the laws were um, you know, created was to serve a certain purpose and that purpose will not be served if it is for an unlimited period of time. So, um, I the, the fourth bullet, I've got that, the TRIPS agreement, this is just, um, it's like an international agreement, like an international, international convention, uh, which tries to govern, which tries to sort of universalize uh, the kinds of intellectual property that's uh, protected around the world. And um, for Malaysia, we are a signatory to this, uh, agreement. So uh, this agreement bas basically gives some um, guidance as to what are the kinds of IP that should be recognized. So you've got uh, seven there, the, the common um, seven 
uh, IP rights. And as you can see there, it's, uh, it includes copyright, trademarks, geographical indications, industrial designs, patterns, um, layout designs of integrated circuits and confidential information. So there are all kinds of IPs actually, and um, patents and copyrights um, are just, you know, two of the ones that we, we, we seem to be very, to be more familiar with, uh, at least here in the university. Um, but there are other forms of IPs uh, that can, that is also recognized by our laws in Malaysia, because Malaysia, as a signatory to the, to the TRIPS agreement, we have passed laws uh, on all seven categories. And as I mentioned earlier, in order to be uh, protected, it has to it has to be recognized by a legal regime. So we have to create this legal regime here in Malaysia in order for these um, IPs to be protected. So the main purpose of IP law is to encourage the creation of ideas and inventions by conferring IP owners with the exclusive right, as I mentioned earlier, to commercial exploitation. Um, of course, it can be for you know personal exploitation as well, but um, it it is um, you know the maximum. Of course, the 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 most um, you know ultimate um, right that you'd want to be able to exploit is would that would be the commercial exploitation. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is of course for a limited duration. Uh, but this is the, the right that's conferred in exchange for disclosure to the world at large. So um, if, you know, the law does not confer this right, then what was the point of disclosing it? And then the people would just keep it to themselves because they're so afraid that it, it will be um, abused and, you know, exploited by someone else. So in exchange for that disclosure to the world, the law gives uh, the, the IP owner the exclusive right to exploit it. So such intellectual output is crucial to the process of innovation um, where ideas are transformed into marketable products or services. Um, without innovation, um, as we know, a country uh, cannot develop and grow its economy. So this is something that we want to try to encourage. So we have to create the environment that allows for innovation. Um, so it is the core of, um, um, as you can see in the slide here, why IP is so important. Um, it is because it's the core of, of IP law to try to strike a balance between the interests of the IP owners and the general public. Um, in particular, the users of the intellectual creation. So it's trying as best as possible to to accommodate, to benefit both the producers and the users of the technical knowledge, and at the same time be conducive to social and economic well-being. So this need for a balance is premised on the fundamental purpose of IP to try to reward creators of IP products so that they are encouraged to innovate further. Um, as you know, as I mentioned earlier, by by giving them this exclusive right and allowing them to commercially exploit it, and at the same time preventing other people from exploiting it within that uh, window period of time that's given, so that they can maximize the benefit that they've um, created. Um, so you're trying to reward creators of IP products so that they encourage to innovate further. So when they see that they can do this, they get rewarded. They tend to do, you know, repeat this process. But if they're not and they they be, being taken advantage of, the tendency, of course, is to you know stop doing that. So this is one side of the balance. The other side is, um, you know, at the same time, the IP law tries to. Um, to increase or to encourage the dissemination of the intellectual creation to the public. So you, you're protecting it, uh, you know, from being exploited by others who are not the owners, but at the same time, you want it to be disseminated to the public because this not only allows the IP to serve its purpose of being created, right? It's created for a reason, just like we are, we created for a purpose. So if it's, 
not being utilized it's just sitting there on the shelf which unfortunately a lot of our ips are doing yeah we just register them we file them but it's not doing anything it's just shit, sitting on the shelf gathering dust no one even knows it exists well they know actually but there's you know there's no sort of real interaction with um with the industry with the society it, then it basically you know serves no purpose um so it needs to serve its purpose by being utilized and at the same time it also increases the body of knowledge that's available for further innovation by others because as we you know we know as lecturers as academics we know that our role in the uh you know large in the large scheme of things is to sort of fill in gaps in the knowledge isn't it and knowledge is 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 vast it's it's infinite there is no uh you know limits to knowledge so by sharing knowledge we know that it's actually a building block to further knowledge and other people build further on that knowledge so this is also important in innovation is important in developing country in developing the economy so that's why it's the 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 law tries to encourage this by offering the protection as well as um you know uh, the dissemination of the intellectual creation so this balancing is done by various um ip laws passed by parliament in the form of statutes yeah acts of parliament which provide for the exceptions for the limitations the duration of the protection for example so different ips have different number of years for which we grant like a monopoly to the owner to exploit um the scope of the exclusive right meaning what can or uh, can't you do with it you can't do everything of course yeah there's a certain scope of uh, rights granted to the ip owner and the need to comply with the requirements of the statute before protection is granted so to begin with you have to fulfill the criteria before the monopoly can even be given to you yeah so these are some of the things that you can see here on the slide uh, why um ip is uh, why it exists why we have laws on this um and it it serves all these different purposes um you know with by using different ip so some ips for example like trademarks it allows you to distinguish your business and products from your competitor um like patents it allows protection for innovative products and services um you know uh, access technical and business information and knowledge um yeah so uh, let's look at the next slide now um and move on to copyright so copyright um is of course as mentioned earlier is one type of ip just like patents trademarks and registered um industrial designs etc so it is governed by ip law of course um and what it governs what the law governs is actually on the use that is made of certain creative products of the mind which are expressions of creativity so the the key word there is expressions yeah you have to express it therefore copyright is not concerned with an idea itself you know an idea in its abstract form but is concerned with the expression of the idea on which a work is based so for copyright to exist it must be embodied in some tangible form so it's no good if it's just in your head or something you know that you think about but it's not expressed um in a tangible form so for example an idea for a book cannot be copyrighted but the book itself which embody the literary work can be copyrighted likewise the canvases of artistic works cds which contain musical works you know sound recordings dvds which embody you know films they're all tangible forms of the expression of ideas so the copyright owner is granted several rights in relation to the work for example making copies of the work um performing or playing the work to the public or renting the work to the public for profit so these are all exclusive rights for the copyright owner so anyone else who does any of these acts without the permission of the copyright owner may be liable for copyright infringement 
However, as I mentioned earlier, there are boundaries, right? These boundaries set by the law within which the copyright owner may assert his exclusive rights. And again, the purpose of this is to provide a balance between the rights of the copyright owner and the interest of the public to have access to the copyright work. Again, there's no good, you know, making it all protected and no one no one can enjoy it or use it or benefit from it except the owner. So what was the point of that? Yeah. So so that's why the law sets all these boundaries and outside of these boundaries the copyright owner actually no longer has control over certain acts. Yeah. Um, in Malaysia, copyright um, is, as you know, governed by the Copyright Act 1987. Um, but since then, of course, there have been a number of amendments and under the Act, um, there has also been passed a number of regulations and orders, you know, these smaller bits of laws that try to govern copyright. Um, and one important feature that we, we um, need to understand about copyright is that um, this Act, uh, this Copyright Act actually makes copyright subsist without the need for any registration, any payment or any filing. So we don't have to register for your copyright to exist. In fact, there is no registration, registration system in Malaysia for the registration of copyright. Um, the copyright exists automatically on the creation of a work that fulfills um, certain criteria. So the criteria, um, there are four criteria basically. The first is that it has to be original, um, but the original here is quite different from the, uh, the meaning of novelty given to patterns that some of you might be familiar with. Um, yeah, um, that's the first requirement. The second is uh, it has to be expressed, right? It has to be written down, recorded, or reduced to some uh, material form. Third one is that it has to belong to one of the categories of protected works in the Act, um, and it's there on the um, slide. Yeah, literary works, musical, artistic, film, sound recordings, broadcast, uh, typographical arrangements, and derivative works. And lastly, it has to satisfy one of the qualifications for protection in the Act, and that is basically the the connecting factor with uh, Malaysia, with the country in which you're trying to, um, you know, establish that you have copyright over the work. Um, so although copyright exists automatically upon creation of a work, um, it doesn't exist upon registration. What the Act does is basically to provide for a possibility of a notification, right? Because you might think, well, if I don't register it or, you know, tell anyone about it, how do they know that I have this copyright? How do I tell people that this piece of work has my copyright in it? So what the Act does is to provide for this thing called a notification. Yeah, so notification of the existence of a copyright in a work to be made um, to the controller of the copyright. And um, this is what we, we do actually at, at UMCIC. We, we help you to inform the controller of copyright which is uh, my IPO basically, yeah, to, to, the, to the existence of the copyright in your work. So because this notification may be made by, by yourself, yeah, on, on or behalf of the author, it can be made by the owner of the copyright, it can be made by an assignee or a person to whom an interest in the copyright has been granted by license, for example. So a lot of different people can actually make this notification. Um, so a register if copyright is created, which will contain all of the particulars relating to the copyright in the work made known in the notification. And so this notification, what it does, it is, is only, it only informs the public about the existence of your copyright in the work. It doesn't by itself create the rights, which never existed before. So the right has to create first by fulfilling, you know, the criteria, the four criteria as I mentioned earlier. Um, neither does the register remove any pre-existing rights. So if the rights existed before, it will just continue to exist. Yeah, so um, if we, we look at the next slide, which is the last slide that I'm going to be referring to, um, it just gives you um, some example of the works 
eligible in the um, seven types of uh, different uh, categories of protected works. Uh, the next slide, please, are you? Oh, there's one before this. Yeah, but yeah, it, um, basically it, it was just um, a list of, um, you know, what are the, uh, the the kinds of items that fall within the seven categories. I did that, the one before this, are you? The other category. I did uh, laptop saya ni masalah sekejap. Oh, they skip the yang tu. Hang sekejap. Dr. Aiza, sementara um, Ayu patah balik, can we repeat the four criteria tadi? Satu is uh, originality, the other one is express, and I ha I might have missed the other two. Uh, the third one is it must belong to one of the categories of protected works in the Act, which is what I'm trying. To, I was trying to get the the okay. slide to show lah. I did the I think okay. the previous slide ada tu. Yang tadilah, the literary, musical, artistic, uh, the other categories ni, uh, macam ni, these categories of works, it has to masuk dalam one of these. And the fourth one is that it has to satisfy one of the qualifications for uh, protection in the act, which is basically the connecting factor lah uh, with, um, apa ni? Malaysia. So, uh, connecting factor ni ada, ada in the previous slide actually, which is basically looking at, um, ada tiga cara, the connecting factors ni, for example, by looking at the status of the author, um, uh, they have to be a qualified person lah. Uh, Qualified person ni, uh, citizen, permanent resident, yeah, body or body corporate company that's established in Malaysia. So, kalau author dia ada disconnecting factor, they fulfill the, quali the, the fourth qualification, the, the fourth criteria. The other connecting factor, ini in the previous slide, yeah, are you? The previous slide. This is, uh, this slide is on the, the seven categories. Uh, ni, dekat bawah tu. Yeah, kat bawah, under criteria for assistance from UMCIC. Yeah, you have the creator is a qualified person. So that's one connecting factor. The other one is uh, by reference to the place of first publication. It needs to be um, apa, published in uh, apa, Malaysia lah. Yeah, the pla place of first first publication, and then uh, the third one is uh, apa ni? The the third connecting factor is the work was made in Malaysia, which is uh, apa? Which is uh, basically uh, it's it the copyright subsists in in work that's uh, apa? Uh, it, it's sort of different from the other two qualifications because uh, it it means that um, it's completed and it arose in respect of uh, work that was done uh, at, at the time the copyright exists. So basically what 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 the the three connecting factors is trying to do is to show the connection between, the work and the country in which it's being notified lah. So why, so that distinguishes you from, you know, copyright that would have connecting factors with other, other jurisdictions, other countries. So you have to prove why it should have that recognition in this country for it to be, 
to to come under the notification and go into the register of copyright. Okay, so that's uh, at the bottom of that slide. And um, this next slide, yeah, the next slide too is the seven category of works for which, in which it must fall in uh, before it can uh, be a recognized copyright in Malaysia. Yeah, so um, that's all from me actually regarding general um, general principles about copyright. So I think I will pass it on now to IU to explain to you about the process of, um, you know, doing that notification that I mentioned, that which, you know, we, we think it's about registering, but it's, it's actually about notification. But anyway, I pass it on to IU now to explain to you how, what are the steps that you need to take in order to, to have, to get the notification of your copyright. Thank you. Are you? Will okay, okay. explain? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, Assalamualaikum uh, to all. Okay. Uh, every good afternoon. Okay. Uh, so I will explain about the. Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes, Hello, Doctor. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will explain about the uh, process and flow uh, about the. Uh, copyright. Okay. Uh, okay. First, uh, okay. You am say. Uh, wait, eh? This one I think got uh, one slide before. Okay. This one process of copyright. Okay. Applicant must uh, apply through online from uh, from your portal. Okay. After complete the form, uh, make sure every applicant complete with all the details and works. The final works. Make sure the final works can uh, uh, can uh, di, uh, is the last works didn't uh, and uh, didn't any changes, okay? Then after after complete the form, uh, the uh, the applicants can submit to the uh, or email to the UMCC, and then the process application application by UMCC. Okay, first we can uh, we will bring all the new application to the Jawatan Kuasa Harta Intelek JKHI. Uh, once a month for approval, then if approved <coughs> uh, and complete, we process and fill up uh, the, uh, my perform. Uh, if not approved, we will uh, inform researcher to get any uh, details required. Lah. Okay, so okay, that one is the process. Uh, your MCS process, okay. Uh, we have uh, one, uh, one, two, and uh, CR1, SD, and uh, section C for this one. This form for uh, form from uh, my poll uh, that we have to complete, okay. Uh, then after we uh, complete everything. Okay, uh, we have to submit to MIPO for copyright filing. Normally, for copyright filing and waiting for the number for filing, we take two, three, two to three months. Include the process of payment, uh, review the com document by MIPO, and correction document if any. Uh, that's all. Uh, so uh, I have the I have the manual guideline. So maybe after this, I will. Uh, show to you. Yeah. Mm. Okay, mm. this one. Okay, this one the process to apply uh, through your M portal. Okay, <coughs> we have the manual guideline. Okay, uh, later I will uh, email to Madam Umu. Okay, maybe Madam Umu will, uh, can uh, mewarwarkan lah. 
about this uh, about this one uh, untuk uh, if lebih mudah researcher to complete their form okay <coughs> so okay that one okay um, we go to the next slide uh, this one we have a procedure of copyright okay each application I work must be submitted in the form of hard copy okay uh, the hard copy must uh, sending to our office to me lah uh, uh, so um, the soft copy also we need to UMCC record any reference okay uh, each work also more than chap uh, more than one chapter is required to be made under one application only means uh, if you you uh, what you chapter uh, you buat you make one book to uh, and uh, got uh, too many titles then you can uh, what uh, you can uh, you can filing together in one book only okay the application form uh, must be completed okay every work in the form for of video and film must use mp4 mp4 format and audio mp3 format okay so this one for the file uh, for the last one each work to be filed must be last work no amend or changes that i mentioned before uh, so that's all uh, so any question about the process Hi, thanks. Hi, this is Dr. Chan from Biomedical Engineering. Hi. Okay. Yep. Yes, Dr. Chan. Um, yep, yep. Um, thanks for the information. Thanks for the sharing. Uh, I would like to ask several questions. Um, do we need to pay in order for us to apply for the copyright? That's uh, my first question. And then second question, uh, I believe that we need to maintain the copyright uh, for a certain period. So, um, are we going to pay also for this? And if yes, uh, what is the channel of uh, paying it in, in order to maintain the copyright? Thank you. Thank you. Are you not jawab ke? It's about payment, kan? Ah, yeah, betul, betul. Payment, right. Mm -hmm. Are you nak jawab ke? Uh, saya tak berapa clear sangat tadi doktor dia punya soalan. Oh. Well, basically that, um, uh, you know, lucky for for all of us here at UM, uh, the thing is, uh, this is why UMCIC, um, that the UMC office exists is because we help you not just in, uh, you know, filing for it, but the cost is also covered by, by the university. But of course, um, in in return, what the notification of filing uh, does is to confer the ownership of the copyright or you know other forms of IP that we file for you to to the university. Uh, so it's filed in the name of the university, but the, the authorship is given to the respective lecturers or researchers, academics who have um, produced the work. So your name is filed as the inventor or the author, uh, but the owner is UM. But UM covers uh, not just the initial filing, but also the maintenance um, for the copyright. Thank you. Perhaps I have another question. Sorry <laughs> for the right. uh, number of questions. Um, yeah, sure, go on. So how do we um, know that whether a particular material or, 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 or things can be copyrighted, whether uh, it's considered copyright or just a, not a copyright? How do you define this? Yeah, so basically as long as uh, maybe uh, Ayu nak pergi slide yang nombor, nombor empat tadi kot slide. Um, I mean, we have the criteria, of course, uh, but even if 
of course, you, you know, we, we, we may not be able to make a proper assessment of whether it actually fulfills the four criteria, for example, the originality, for example, because um, the, the criteria of originality there relates to, as I mentioned earlier, not, not really about um, novelty, but about how it has to be um, not copied, basically. So it's not copied from elsewhere, from someone else. It should originate from the author. So sometimes this is something that we, of course, won't be able to know because there might, I mean, on, in all honesty, we might think, yeah, I did this myself. I didn't copy from anyone else. But um, uh, what, what we can do for you is to do like a search um, and... Uh, and then that will determine whether um, you know it, it looks like it has been copied um, sometimes inadvertently, right? Because we look at so many different materials, we, we refer to different things. So sometimes it, it inadvertently looks like it has been copied. But what um, we can do for you, and also what our patent agents can do, is to do a little you know search and check whether um, it fulfills the original originality uh, requirement. Normally, it's not really a problem for that because um, even if sometimes what we're doing looks similar to, uh, you know, what someone else is doing, especially in the same, you know, area of knowledge, area of academic discipline, we tend to, you know, focus or be interested in more or less the same thing. So sometimes we tend to produce almost identical pieces of work, but uh, all of them can... Um, you know, uh, fulfill the requirement of originality and they can all be copyrighted in its in its own right. So it's not like patents where you must be the first to file. So even if someone else has, has uh, notified their copyright in a work that's almost similar to yours, it's still possible to, to file it, um, you know, provided, you know, it's our own original work. Uh, but that is something that we can we can get help with by doing a search for you and, and uh, the the agents also help us with that. So you can just submit your work to, to CIC and we can uh, do the checking for you. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Raihan, nak tanya ke? Cik Raihan? Oh, tak ada, tak ada. Okay. So Dr. Faiza, a question from me. If we have um um file like we wrote, we write a book or a manual and we file for ISBN or EISBN, is that still eligible for copyright? Let's say we want to file we have the ISBN but we still file for the copyright. Is that okay? Uh when you when you do the ISBN, do you confer the copyright to the publisher? Ah, perhaps yes. So it belongs. The copyright belongs to the publisher, yeah. Um, yeah, that that is normally the case because uh, when you when you work with all these publishers, they they always ask us to to confer the the copyright to them so that they are free to right to to make copies or to disseminate it and all that without any restrictions. So yeah, that would mean that it 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 would belong to them. Okay. Okay. I'm sure there are a lot of other questions. Uh, yeah, I can see. Uh, Dr. Kayatri, would you like to switch on your microphone, perhaps? Uh, Puan Azni pun ada nak tanya ni. Uh, hi. And? Hi, yes. Uh, thanks, Dr. Faiza and Ms. Ayu. Uh, so, just want to ask regarding the uh, Ms. Ayu mentioned just now. We have to also submit hard copy. How do we do that? Okay, Doctor. Uh, you boleh pass kepada kami dan kita punya staff pun ada dekat office sekarang dan uh, ada few staff ada dekat office. Then um, maybe by next week, I ada di office lah. So, boleh hantar uh, direct to the office, UMCSO office or by post also can. Okay, uh, okay, just want to check my understanding. So, kita kena uh, apa ni, submit dalam UM portal sekali dengan hard copy, betul? Yes, yes. Oh. 
But as I know the system now uh, got problem, uh, I have got uh, some complaint from the researcher uh, sebab dia orang tak boleh what dia uh, orang tak boleh apa? Dia orang tak boleh down uh, upload dia orang punya document. So ah, yeah, betul, uh, betul. maybe boleh direct Ah, ha. So maybe boleh direct uh, submit dekat I atau email lah. But okay. I need the hard copy because ah uh, uh, tak nak meng mengelakkan daripada uh, kesalahan uh, apa? submission tu the MIPO. Okay. Thank you. Alright. So if it's a if it's a video, we hard copy means CD lah, CD or pen drive. Yeah. Yeah, doctor. Yes. Because that that is what we will be submitting to my IPO. The the tangible form, as I mentioned earlier, again, the tangible form. So it's literary work, it's a printed form. If it's sound or film, it has to be in a CD lah. Sekarang komputer laptop dah tak ada dah tempat CD. Kan? Mm. Even pen drive pun yeah. dah banyak yang laptop yang tak ada. Uh, Puan Azni, Encik uh, Dr. Ahmad, silakan. I see Dr. Vinod also raise their hand. Please. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, Dr. Dr. Faiza uh, uh, Siti. Uh, saya nak tanya tentang Contohnya kalau macam kolaborasi kerja antara contohnya dua universiti contohnya macam mana kita uh, proceed dengan copyright ni? Uh, uh, pihak mana ataupun macam mana? Boleh terangkan lebih detail pasal, pasal ni tak? Thanks. Teacher. Okay, thank you for the question. So yeah, for collaborations, uh, normally uh, what we would like, what we would prefer is that before the uh, apa ni, the work is produced before the collaboration actually begins. It is actually best if you uh, get in touch with us, UMCIC, because what we do is we also help you draft uh, collaboration agreements with um, with parties outside UM. So that in that agreement, we can already... Um, you know, provide for who is, how we're going to share this. Is it going to be, is the copyright going to belong solely to UM? Is it going to belong solely to them? Or is it something that we share? And if we share, you know, berapa percent, 50-50 ke? Because it will depend on, for example, who provides funding, how much, what contribution we make, right? And then it will also um, uh, provide for who will be the lead party in uh, uh, submitting the the notification to my IPO. Normally we try to be the lead party lah so that we can, you know, we will handle everything. But we will also get the collaborating partner to share in the cost because all these things, as you know, require money, again, require funding. So we if it's uh it will depend on the percentage study lah. If it's if we have equal uh joint ownership, then we try to also we want to equally share the costs of the filing and the maintenance and all that. So this applies across the board actually, not just to copyrights but semua IP. Uh, ada kaitan let's say for example external grant for example you get the grant from external body. So itu yeah. pun sama, sama ke? Is it the same? Yeah, sama juga. Uh, we will have a, we, we can enter into a, an agreement. This is especially in particular if the body that awards the grant is interested to have some, uh, you know, ownership or control over the IP. If they are just giving you grants, they they they, they don't care. They don't they're not bothered. They just they don't mind with us having a hundred percent. You know, even that it's better. Even then, it's better to have an agreement so that dari pada awal we can, uh, you know, um, consolidate this so that later, if let's say they turn around and say, oh, actually, we want to take this IP then they can't do that because we already have an agreement that clearly says they they allow us to take ownership or that we share it so these things are better to be to be done before lah, before the work is created so that that timbul dispute and thing okay thank you so much Dr. Faiza. okay welcome maybe uh, dr ahmad silakan dr ahmad Assalamualaikum. 
Assalamualaikum. Um, saya nak tanya tentang uh, hasil uh, seperti uh, web application ataupun software lah. Uh, macam mana ya untuk dapatkan uh, hak cipta tu? Sebab nak hantar uh, dalam hard copy sebab dia boleh dicapai terus melalui contohnya macam web uh, web app. Dia boleh dicapai terus daripada laman web tu lah. So uh, uh, jadi bagaimana uh, nak hantar tu? Um, yang saya pernah tengok lah sebelum ni some of uh, the apa ni, applicants yang hantar what they did is to um, print it out because macam apps ni dia ada macam dia punya uh, steps dia kan dia punya each page what it looks like what what are the dia punya apa tu um, the map kan macam manual ke? Ah, macam manual macam tu pun uh, you can have that Uh, copyrighted in the form of macam macam literary jugalah dia dia printed you print it out on uh, uh, paper uh. so dia jadi manual macam tu ya yeah. baik terima kasih maknanya adakah macam yang puan ayu share tadi yang uh, step by step nak register EIPR tu website okay. tadi puan ayu share tu kan uh-huh. yang uh, website uh, IPR tu kan website uh, page pertama ada klik button sini page kedua ah oh, yes correct macam tu ah ah yes untuk Dr Ahmad kalau Betul. buat website nak hantar hard copy tu adalah print out of that step by step tu lah ya ah uh, uh, print out atau boleh masuk ke dalam CD atau uh, Dr Ahmad boleh uh, submit source code dia pun boleh selalunya kalau website memang dia orang akan kebanyakannya akan submit uh, source code atau dia orang akan printed macam Dr Faiza bagi tahu tu Oh, source code eh? Ah, source code pun boleh doktor. Okey, okey, tak apa. Saya hmm. banyaklah pula <laughs> source code. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Tak, maksud saya sini, kalau source code tu saya nak cetak ke saya nak hantar cetak. dia punya? Cetak, cetak doktor. Oh, banyaklah ya. <laughs> okey, tak apa, hmm, tak apa. Memang kena cetak. That's why kita suggest untuk masuk dalam CD lah. CD dia lebih okey sikit, dia boleh masuk banyak kan. Kalau macam printed tu, memang uh, banyak pages lah. Yang saya hmm. pernah buat sebelum ni, memang banyak pages. Tak, uh, kenapa perlu CD ya? Kalau kita hantar dalam zip file ke contohnya, tak ada beza apa pun dengan CD. Uh, kalau zip file pun kita akan printed juga doktor. Kita akan hantar ke MyPo tu uh, dengan uh, printed atau uh, secara dalam CD. Sebab kita ada kategori dia tu kan, literary. Okey, uh, dia maksud dia ke... kalau tak nak cetak boleh guna de- CD lah ya? Betul. Ya. Yeah. Dia kena ah, tangible okay. form lah kan maknanya uh-uh. And yes. yang, yang boleh dipegang Betul ah, <laughs> Dia nak masuk dalam mas- bilik kebal nak kunci macam mana ah, Mungkin macam tu Okey tak apa uh-uh. Tapi Basically maksud dia kalau send, uh, secara kita berikan kita have mereka submit. katakan akses ke Ataupun masuk ke laman uh, web atau aplikasi tu yang kita buat uh, Web aplikasi yang kita buat tu pun diorang uh, Dia proses dia apa mereka akan tengok ke nanti laman tu ke macam mana Sebab uh, kalau source code, dia orang tak boleh jalan, dia masa tak, uh, uh, betul, uh, sebab uh. dia melibatkan uh, apa uh, server, melibatkan <coughs> beberapa betul. aplikasi server. Jadi uh, kita wajib berikan mereka akses sebagai admin ke untuk masuk ke macam mana? Uh, tak perlu. Uh, tak just perlu. Doktor, macam Dr. Faizal cakap, just printed je. Nanti dia orang akan uh, setiap, maknanya setiap, kalau macam website tu, setiap pages tu, doktor kena bagi dia punya, betul lah, dia punya pa- features paparan. tu. Paparan. Ah. Ah, betul. Baik, baik, baik. Tak apa. Jelas-jelas. Terima kasih. Okay. Dr. Vinod, you are there? Yeah, thank you so much uh, uh, Dr. Fiza and team for uh, enlightening us. Uh, I just wanted to ask, um, I'm not a Malaysian. I work with University of Malaya and I'm an expatriate faculty member. Am I eligible to file CIA for copyright under Malaysian law and through C- CIC? Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Vinod, thank you for that question. So, uh, this is, <clears throat> sorry, going back to the um, item I mentioned earlier about the connecting factors. Okay. So, you only need to fulfill one of them. There are three, right? So, one of them is about status uh, of the qualified person, meaning a citizen or a permanent resident or a body corporate that's uh, constituted under the laws of Malaysia. But that's just one of the three. So oh. even if you don't fulfill that one, it's okay because okay. the other two connecting factors will enable you to also uh, notify the copyright. And okay. and that is uh, one is to do with the place of first publication 
Um, right. And second is about the place where the work was um, created. Okay. So, yeah, so you can use that as your connecting factor as well. So if you're, the work that you made was made here in Malaysia or yes. if it was first published in Malaysia, then yes. you are still eligible for the notification of copyright right. to be done in Malaysia. Okay, that that that's that's wonderful. Uh, one other thing, like because I'm, uh, we are creating a framework of competency, so it is definitely for the first time, and it's a new work. Uh, can it be considered as a derivative work, as per your understanding? Uh, sorry, well, uh, I didn't it, quite it, get. It's, it's it's a competency framework which we are coming up through our um, our project. So, and yeah. that competency framework is the first of its kind. It's totally novel work. So, can be uh, will it be eligible to be considered as a derivative work, or, uh, or were it, uh, like you know what kind of category under which I can request for uh, copyright on that? Um, if you if it's coming under derivative works, um, it has to fall into either one of two categories. Uh, one is. Uh, if it's like a translation, adaptations, arrangements, um, or other transformations of works that are eligible for the copyright. Okay. Uh, and uh, the other is if it's a collection of works eligible for copyright or compilation of data, whether it's like in a machine, readable or other forms, which okay. constitute intellectual creation by reason of the selection and arrangement of the contents. Okay. So it might fall under that if it fulfills the criteria for derivative works. Otherwise, we might try to see if it can fall under the other six categories. All right. All so, right. We will submit to CIC and then you will advise us, right? Yeah. Just okay. submit it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Dr. Aisha, please. Hi. Uh, thank you, Dr. Faiza. Where are you? Uh, Dr. Azza, all right. Um, just one question. Um, Dr. Azza, we, we inshallah can publish um, the book, right? The book. So, let's say um, we have, um, kira kita ada publish chapters in the book, and that is uh, kira macam um, in writing form. Okay, mm. can we, for example, extract from that work and turn it into sort of manual or small guidebook or something like that and uh, make that as a copyright work, boleh ke? It is from the same work. Can we do that? So, uh, so when you mentioned that they are actually from chapters, so these chapters oh. came from a book lah, presumably. No, that, that, um, the chapter kita yang tulis and mm -hmm. it for example they are published but then we extract i mean here we make it as macam uh macam apa simple guideline lah um for that topic can we boleh ke kita can we can that consider as a copyright boleh ke um well, as long as basically they fulfill the four criteria that they do, so meaning even if the original chapter two was already, uh, okay. there was a copyright for that chapter, maybe as a book, uh, as you know, a part of a compilation. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you're basically extracting um, info or data from there to be made into some other form of, um, as you say, guideline, ke, some... Oh a manual or something. So, yeah, as long as the, you can show originality kat situ, for example, uh, originality meaning in the sense of the other effort to, it's not just macam copying kan, tapi kita yeah, yeah. Macam, uh, modify and we add this uh -huh. and that. Uh, so, the, uh, it can have its own copyright jugalah. As a separate yeah. um, copyright. So, thank you. Thank you. That's that's nice to know because um we had the question from from uh, I think Dr. Hamid last time about the content of the research and then uh, we want to derive like a poster of it, uh, like a um a single infographic kind of information that we derive from the research work. Uh, 
So oh. that poster, that infographic is eligible as a uh, copyright material to be to be to be uh, reviewed by MCIC lah of course. Mm. Can? Yeah. Yes, of course. Thank you. Any other questions? Dr. Ahmad masih angkat tangan. Is that a new same question atau Ma ma <laughs> Sama ya. Yeah? Okay, okay. Okay, it's 4:05. We promise to end at 4. Um, I believe uh, Puan Ayu has shared her contact details at the last slide earlier. And uh, yes. Sorry, I don't want one last one. Uh, let's say, sorry, uh, one last one. Uh, let's say, kalau uh, this is uh, uh, a product, uh, an e-book, for example, kalau kita produce something in form of e-book. So, you mentioned about tangible tadi kan? So, kalau in e-book, you need to print, uh, but then it's not, it's no more an e-book. So, macam mana kita uh, do with it? Boleh masuk dalam CD lah, Doktor. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. If if you yeah terlalu banyak kan besar nak print it, so we we accept both lah tangible forms either printed or in a CD. So so if it's printed kan, uh, once kita dah print, uh, maksudnya kita protect ni the the content lah right the content mm -hmm. saja. So in that meaning um, uh, yang kita buat ni yang kita nak uh, maybe release out to is in form of an, an e-book. So that doesn't tak tak ada masalah. Eh? Yeah, yeah. And, and any kind of tangible form where you can uh, show the content, as you say, content of what you have worked on uh, and that you want to copyright. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Because uh, what, basically whatever tangible form yang kita submit kepada my iPod ni is just as uh, prima facie evidence to show that uh you know the connection that we have as the as the author who produced the work so it's not really for them to do anything with it pun it's just that later kalau ada someone challenge kan the copyright we can we can show that this is what we submitted and this is and it fulfilled the criteria and it was accepted as a copyright so that dia tak boleh orang lain tak boleh macam uh, uh, infringe lah basically okay so, understood uh, yeah Thank you so much. You're welcome. Is there any other questions? Okay, uh, you can see Puan Siti Rohayu's email address and uh, phone number on the screen. Um, for any further questions or any other um, help that you would require, clarification or any other things. Um, thank you. I would like to express uh, sincere gratitude Thanks to Dr. Faiza and uh, Puan Ayu, Team MCIC. Thank you so much. This is really enlightening for us. I hope teaching and learning innovation, IP filing becomes a culture among us. I know we do a lot of innovation. We are very innovative people, but uh, there you go. All the, <laughs> all the hands clapping are coming up at the same time. No, so nice. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope it becomes a culture among us and uh, it doesn't stop just at um, UM Lighter Grant but also keep it in our culture if you feel it's because like uh, Dr. Faisal said, it's an informant. We inform them that this is ours. It's not that we are, a, it's not the same as patent where you have to, you know. Um, is, there a, is there a duration from the first publication? Like patent can be the first publication and you have to file the patent within uh, 12 months. For copyright, is there any such um, rules? Uh, tak ada. Because tak as as uh, as I mentioned earlier, dia even without kita notify pun it exists. Cuma nobody knows about it lah. So if we notify them, uh, then uh, it it just becomes something formalized. Mm -hmm. uh, cuma the the thing about connection tadi tu, kalau uh, kan one of the three connecting factors tu is that it must be first published in Malaysia. Kalau kita pernah publish let's say dekat UK, US ke wherever, uh, then you must within 30 days you should uh, publish dekat Malaysia lah pula. Mm. But like I said, it's just one of the connecting factors. There are two others kan. So kalau kita citizen atau kita produce the work dekat sini pun it's sufficient to to connect it with Malaysia lah. Even mm. if you have published it elsewhere. Mm. Okay. 
Thank you so much. Very informative. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much again. Um, with that, I would like to end the session. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Fatima. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Oh, do we want Thank to have everyone. a group photo? Do we want to have a group photo? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> last, last, last. Good job, good job. I always forget. And uh, the feedback form in the feedback form in the chat section, eh? Um, don't forget to fill out the feedback form in the chat section and kindly switch on your camera for a quick group photo. All right, be ready in five seconds. Okay, ready with your smile. Okay, okay, I'm waiting for five more seconds for the rest of you need to open your camera. All right. Okay, smile. One, two, three. Okay, let me take the screenshot and save it. One more. Okay. Ready? Satu, dua, tiga. Okay, you're done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Ayu. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr.